Ike swings open the door, white house, yellow with old spore. He glares, pine needles felt the roof, clog the gutters, spit sap into gummy puddles. The twin pines stand aloof, 10 feet from the door. They mark the line of an ancestral divide, the once grand spread parceled into tiny threads. Ike makes a decision just like that, rummages in one of his many sheds, finds the oil-dusted gear, and setting aside his dead wife's fears, climbs up the outstretched arms, loops rope here and there, pulls up the chainsaw, reaches out, touches the tip to a limb, a blade to skin, and the branch as thick as a wrestler's leg lets go, swings. For six, seven hours, the chainsaw winds. From top to bottom, the limbs are struck, fall crackling to earth, with branches crushed and done. Ike grins, cigar clenched between teeth. He squints up to the tallest point, sets its path, with delicate finesse, rips the cord, slices deep, hears above the screen the shattering crack. The first trunk falls. A wave, crusting, suspended, gathers steam, plummets, hits the ground with a primeval roar. The earth trembles and absorbs. In less than 20 hours, two pines are wiped clean from landmarks on maps and the registry of deeds. Later in April, when the grackle mob arrives and lines up on the neighbor's fence, the blackbirds, more than 50 strong, stare up to the ghosts where their ancestors nested, silenced of their raspy cries.